In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I know I've told you this story before, but I can't come through an All Saints Day without thinking about uh, this young girl and this event some 15 years ago. It occurred to me that this young girl, who's four or five at the time, is now almost 20 years old, um, which makes me sort of shudder. Uh, but when I think of All Saints, I picture her gathered around during a children's sermon that first uh, All Saints Day that I was ordained. Uh, and when the question was asked, what is a saint? So many hands went up, and all the children wanted to answer uh, to the best of their ability, and several said somebody who believes in God, someone who does good things, and every answer that, uh, that you can imagine. And this young uh, four- to five-year-old whose parents had just become aware of several developmental uh, delays and, uh, and was, was recalibrating their expectations uh, for the future of this child uh, says with an incredible exuberance, saints are people like us with big dreams. Saints are people like us with big dreams. Stopped everyone in their tracks. Saints are people with big dreams. They're people with God's dreams. And I think the world is in desperate need of more and more saints. Just think, the person that took the time out of their lives to teach you Sunday school was a dreamer. They believed in incredible things that could come from helping you deepen your faith and what that might materialize in the future. The people that said, come, that answered those questions that are asked on your baptismal day, who said, we will help this child grow into the full stature of Christ. They were dreamers been hard to dream recently. The world has made it hard to dream, and we are so affected by the events that we, uh, uh, that we witness on the news again and again, and they diminish our dreams. Our dreams were diminished significantly last week when a man tried to break into a church, an African-American church, and then, uh, when it was locked, went to a Kroger and shot down two innocent people. Our dreams were diminished when 11 people lost their lives, two Holocaust survivors, because somebody felt that God, who is love in its entirety, somehow called that person to go into a synagogue and shoot people who were different. Our dreams get a little bit smaller. Saints are people with big dreams. The world needs more dreams being realized, more people boldly, defiantly dreaming in the face of what we see on the news. I saw God's dream, a defiant dream realized as I stood behind there, and I wish everybody had that position behind that table last Sunday as we prayed the Lord's Prayer hand in hand, with the people at First Baptist. It was a defiant dream of what the world is. And the world bends towards whichever dreams are more, are more tangible out in the world. Whichever dreams are more vociferously lived, that is what the world bends towards. And I believe there is more of the spirit of that dream than there is in the lives that have been taken away. There is more love in the world than hatred. But we have to dream. That young four or five-year-old theologian uh, sentiments were echoed by Barbara Brown Taylor, who put it this way. We are all dreamers, but dreamers have fallen upon hard times. We belong to a people whose sense of reality is much more limited. We have been schooled in science and philosophy. We have learned to trust what we can handle and prove. We have been taught to think, not to dream. We have lived long enough to watch many of our dreams die hard. Only saints and children still believe their dreams will come true. The rest of us are adults who know the difference between fact and fantasy. Our dreams rise to our lips and we tamp them down again. 
remembering how often we have been disappointed by them, reminding ourselves that there is real work to be done in the real world, where dreams cannot bandage a wound or buy a loaf of bread. So we give ourselves to that work. Many of us find real satisfaction in it. We put in long hours, we keep good records, and produce measurable results. Fifteen telephone calls returned, twelve more initiated, eighteen letters written for two new accounts this week, four carpools executed, six loads of laundry done, eight bags of groceries bought and under the food budget. These are facts, not fantasy. You can add them up and you can write them down and you can put them under your pillow at night when you limp home from another 12-hour day and fall exhausted into your bed. A refugee of your own wrecked economy. What do we dream? Now, one of the things that always gave me encouragement is that as bad as the world looked outside these doors, if I talked to somebody who had lived enough uh, an octogenarian uh, um, who had more decades uh, under their belt than I had, they'd always tell me, you know, we've said this before, but the sun always came up. You know, there's been darker times in our history, uh, but we've persevered and it's gotten better. More and more recently, I've heard those same people say, you know what, I've never seen it like this. These are not great times, but these are the times that call for bold, defiant dreamers, because that's what saints are. They're people with big dreams, and the more we stop dreaming, the more the world doesn't see the light of the next day. The gospel gives us all the tools we need to be saints, to be dreamers. Jesus is delayed in coming to Lazarus, and he seems somewhat unaffected by the word that Lazarus is ill. Uh, he understands this is part of the journey, part of what has to happen, uh, and he seems somewhat unaffected until he gets close to the scene. And then when he gets there and he sees Martha and Mary in their, in their grief, and he sees that their dreams have been a little bit diminished by the fact that their brother has died when he sees the grief of his Jewish brothers and sisters, he realizes their dreams have been a little diminished and he weeps. And it talks about the incredible pain that he feels. Uh, and they said, you know what? He must have absolutely loved this man, Lazarus, this friend of his, for him to feel such pain. He must have loved, deeply loved Mary and Martha for him to feel such pain. And I'll tell you, Jesus must have known that he was deeply loved to be able to do what he needed to do. For Jesus knew when he lifted Lazarus up from the dead that he nailed himself to a cross. That when he did that defiant act, that dream uh, that Rome wouldn't let stand, he knew he was nailing himself to a cross. So he used the first part of being a saint. Know deep down in your core that you are beloved, that you are loved by God, that love's very nature is loving you fully. Stand on that foundation that you are absolutely loved, like Lazarus was loved by Jesus, like Mary was loved by Jesus, like Martha was loved by Jesus, like Jesus knew he was loved by his Father in heaven. One, know that you are loved. Two, the story teaches us that in order to be a saint, in order to be a dreamer, you have to believe in the impossible. Believe in the power of God to do what everyone says can't be done. To lift even the dead to new life. Believe in a God who loves you and who can do absolutely anything. And three, one of the things required to stand as boldly as the world needs us to stand, to be the kind of saint uh, that stands in the face of whatever comes your way, is the abiding belief that this is but a moment, that our life is far more than the days that we have. But part of the truth of that Lazarus story, part of the truth of the other side of the cross, is that we have the promise of eternal life. So when those three things we are given all the tools we need to dream big dreams, to be saints of God, to know that we are loved and to make that our foundation, our abiding truth 
our reality. To know that we are loved by a God who can do the impossible, who can make absolutely anything possible. And to believe even in this life, even as we stand in a vulnerable, fragile place, that this life isn't the end. That God's never done with us. That we have the promise of eternal life with all those saints that showed us what it's like to be a saint show us what it's like to be regular people with big dreams, God dreams. One more story I wanted to share about our trip to Haiti. One of the things that was so beautiful about this trip to Haiti is that we saw people living out of their dreams, even uh, though there is poverty that we don't know in this world, uh, in this country to the same degree, but there are people uh, who are doing art and making art and being creative and building uh, building things because they live in that dream. And our uh, driver, a guy, Hearns, uh, who is just an incredible human being uh, and a wonderful uh, a translator and guy, and it, as we started talking about three days in, we realized uh, he has a huge family and that one of his brothers was a priest uh, who actually talked to our children downstairs in the children's chapel uh, four or five years ago. And, uh, uh, but he's talking about... Uh, his hometown, and you can see the incredible pride he has in his hometown. He talks about his school as one of the great schools in Haiti, uh, and it's in this very small town. Um, and as we finished the day uh, at one of the schools, he was going to sneak out and go to his hometown to, uh, uh, to participate in a public meeting. Um, and he uh, asked us at the last minute whether we wanted to join him, and we said, sure. Uh, and as we are heading out there, he's telling us exactly what this meeting's about. Uh, he has corralled several of the town leaders. He no longer lives in the town. He lives in Port-au-Prince. Uh, but several of the town leaders, uh, because they need to do something about their town. Uh, he looks with tears as he describes the bakery that was across the street from the school uh, that is in ruins and, and burned down. And he talks about uh, the things that limit them economically. And he says, you know, we can't do it all for ourselves, uh, but we can open up the doors to opportunity. Uh, and what he had coordinated uh, with his dad and other leaders in his small, small town uh, is that they were all putting money together uh, to build a road. And they believed that if they built a road uh, that the government would, wouldn't build for them, if they built a road to their town, uh, that it would open the door for other opportunities to come in. And so with hard-earned money, very limited hard-earned money, they all had put together money uh, and put it in a pot, and they had a town meeting to discuss uh, building a road and what part of the road needed to be built first. And they all uh, were so invested and so confident in their dream that they could make a difference in their community, that if they built this road, um, that they would be able to open up engines for growth and, 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 and promise in their town, uh, that it was absolutely inspiring to all of us. We didn't speak the language. We didn't know exactly what was said at the town meeting, uh, but it opened in prayer and a beautiful song. Uh, and it was so filled with hope um, that it echoed these are people who dream. These are people whose dreams for Haiti are much bigger than the reality might promise. These are people who understand that part of being a saint is holding on to those three truths. They are beloved by God. In God, all things are possible. And even beyond this life, we are the, given the promise of God's full embrace. And it allowed them to stand up and be people just like you and me with big dreams. Amen.